Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. It's my great pleasure to introduce Nicolò Daina today. Um, Nicolò is a research scientist at Civil and, and Engineering and Engineering Mechanics at Columbia University. He also has an appointment with the Center on Global Energy Policy, which is kind of like the Atkinson Center that we have here, but at Columbia. Um, uh, Nicolò has a PhD in transport um, from the Imperial College in the UK. Then you stayed there for a little bit, and then you had a faculty position in Glasgow before uh, joining Columbia. Nicolò is a choice smaller, just like I am. Um, so we work in very similar problems, and so I'm really excited to see your presentation today. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me. Uh, thank you all for for coming. Yes, I. Um, uh, my work is mainly uh, applying uh, uh, behavioral models uh, to uh, transportation electrification and, and to um, integration of uh, uh, transportation and energy systems as uh, transportation is increasingly um, electrified. So today um, I will talk about, you know, partly some of my work on uh, modeling uh, choices on um, with respect of uh, um, smart charging on electric vehicles but also i will uh, touch on some more recent work on on uh, trying to uh, uh, model um, decisions uh, for um, um, for fleet at the organizational level um, so i want to start uh, this presentation to kind of uh, give you a view of what I um, think uh, are the, the ch current challenges in, in transportation electrification. So we all know that electric vehicles are here and uh, you can see them not everywhere, but uh, um, it's more likely to find an electric vehicle every now and then now than, than 10 years ago, but adoption is is still low um, so in uh, in 2022 the um, the share of the um, of the electric cars and the share in the stock the, of the electric cars was uh, just uh, above between you know was around 1.3 percent in the united states this is still fairly low there is a lot of um a big way to go uh, to reach uh, full electrification uh, for for net zero, there are other countries uh, in which the share is higher. The for the countries with the higher share is uh, is uh, Norway. With, I think they are around above twenty percent now the, in the in the electric um, vehicle stock. And if you look at the market share of of new uh, vehicles that are uh, purchased, uh, I think. The, 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 um, um, the, the market share is, is even higher. So this is one problem though. So it's still in certain countries, certainly in the United States, the adoption is still low. Uh, our related problem is that the, the transition uh, towards electrification is still not an equitable one because uh, um, access to electric mobility is for now um, basically uh, benefited only um, a certain part of the population, typically the, the, the wealthier uh, part of, of the population. And, um, and then there are um, problems, so these are problems related to adoptions, and then there are problems that are related to um, integration of, uh, um, of the charging demand from electric vehicles into the grid. So if, if, uh, if uh, we do not, as, as uh, the market share of electric vehicles increase, there will be more demand for uh, for charging. And if the if the charge is in concentrated only when uh, vehicles uh, uh, arrive at home and uh, and, uh, and they are plugged in, uh, then we can basically have an increase in uh, in the charging load, both at the distribution network level, but um, um, you may also have uh, uh, an increase in, uh, so, so this gives problems on the distribution network level, 
but also on, on you might have increase in generations, require increase in, in, um, in generation demand. So, but of course, if you can somehow manage um, the, the, the charging events, you could uh, avoid these, uh, these uh, increases and, and potentially even use um, the electric vehicles as, uh, as local storage for the grid to increase, increase renewable energy uh, um, use, uh, for example, to, and to uh, <clears throat> uh, basically avoid the problems that are related with the fluctuation of, uh, of renewable energy generation. Because the uh, vehicles that are parked and plugged in, electric vehicles that are parked and plugged in, um, could be used as, as storage uh, for energy services. So this is another problem a third, uh, ah, actually a fourth problem that is still open, is that the electric vehicles uh, have batteries, and batteries are made of uh, typically mainly lithium, but then there are other minerals like nickel, cobalt, or or depending on the battery chemistry, and uh, and the concentrations of these minerals are um, so that the, the, the mines of, of these minerals uh, are um, only in certain part of the world. They are very concentrated, and uh, and so and essentially. The, the, um, <clears throat> the transition to electric vehicles, but more in general, the transitions to our um, um, green, uh, um, green energy systems is, uh, is causing um, environmental and social concern about the mining practices of these minerals. For instance, uh, um, cobalt is mainly mi mined in, in Congo and uh, with uh, poor environmental and social practices. And, but also <clears throat> um, lithium mines are, um, are, you know, cause environmental and social concern. And there are also concerns that because this, this, the locations of this, this mineral is concentrated in certain local area, and there are several countries that, that want to um, basically procure this mineral for, for their um, electric mobility and green transitions there are also um, geopolitical tensions that are uh, caused by security of supply. So there, there are, um, for instance, uh, the, the, in the US, the Inflation Reduction Act is uh, uh, posing some constraints on, on where the, the critical minerals should come from uh, that are used for, for, for um, batteries of vehicles sold in the United States if these, these, uh, these uh, vehicles are eligible for uh, purchase incentives. And so, so these are, and, uh, and essentially mm, this type of, uh, um, of policies that mm, are uh, um, reflecting these, these, uh, these problems about critical minerals are uh, typically supply uh, policies. So they tend to kind of, uh, ensure that the supply chain has certain characteristics that is secure so that it can be more secure for example for the united states but uh, i argue that there um one other way to um consider the the um, critical mineral demand problem is also considering uh, demand management of uh, of uh, critical minerals through demand management of um the battery use for electric vehicles, fleet, and batteries, and and I will talk more about. This. So these are this is just an overview of what I think are uh, some important problems in transportation electrification today, and uh, that, and and the way I approach these problems is try to I try to understand um, um, how model uh, how um, users or the drivers. Um, adopt uh, the vehicles, how they use them, and, and what is their effect on adoption, equity, uh, um, smart charging, and, and critical mineral demand, as well as I um, try to understand how, um, uh, how to model fleet, uh, fleet decisions uh, to 
basically and to analyze the impacts on 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 these on these challenges and so on and today uh, in the interest of time I, I will focus on on uh, on two aspects uh, uh, specifically one is about um, modeling uh, um, charging choice behavior for vehicle um, grid integration uh, and um, and I also will briefly mention the way this this choice model uh, can be applied for um, essentially uh, to uh, can be applied to extract flexibility for the grid and uh, and also the other the other aspect I will talk about is uh, trying to basically inform um, uh, fleet decisions so that um, mobility fleets can have a lower impact on, on critical mineral demand. Um, so these are the two aspects I will touch upon, but I'm working um, and I have more work in this space. And, and if you want to talk about it with me afterwards, I'm, I'm happy to do so. So uh, the first part is modeling drivers charging preferences in smart charging operation. Uh, so in this work, basically, uh, what's what's the motivation? So demand for EV is growing fast, uh, and this, as I mentioned before, can lead to uh, <clears throat> uh, peak in demand and that that cause problem at the distribution network level, generation, so on. Smart charging and and vehicle to grid can help avoiding these problems. They can even help improving the operation um, of the grid when um, increased uh, renewable energy um, is injected because, as I said, when they are parked, electric vehicles could be potentially used as batteries. Um, and as you can see, most of the time uh, vehicles are, uh, are parked. Hmm? They, are, they are driven uh, uh, only a very a very tiny fraction uh, of, of the time. However, it's not necessarily true that every time that they are parked, these vehicles are available for, um, for grid services or for smart charging or to extract flexibility and so on. Um, in fact, uh, they might be parked and not plugged in, but even when, when they are parked uh, at a facility where a, in a charging point is available, it's not said that uh, an individual might want to um, use all this time to provide services to the grid. In fact, uh, flexibility for the grid depends on uh, driver choices. If, someone, if some driver wants to have uh, a vehicle charge as fast as possible because he has, uh, he, he might think that he might need it uh, for some um, unpredictable reason, then that, uh, that choice is not flexible. Whereas uh, mm, mm, instead, are there other people maybe uh, uh, okay in having uh, um, the their uh, <clears throat> their vehicle charge in a in a longer uh, period uh, period of time, right? So uh, and only in this case, this this graph represent uh, basically um, the charging choice space in a very uh, simplified way. So this this choice of of uh, state of charge at the end of charging operation and and um, and charging time implies that. This, this choice is not flexible. But if, uh, if uh, um, uh, the preference for state of charge and the end of charge and duration of the charging operation is in this area, it means that ch the charging service provider could deliver, um, could define a charging profile that might be uh, um, uh, suitable for um, cost reduction or for providing grid services and so on. So this, this, in this space, the choices are flexible. If they are done here, they are inflexible. And uh, one, one thing that we have to know is that people, when making this choice, they might uh, <clears throat> make trade-off also with their um, 
um, travel preference. So maybe to have, uh, to have a, a higher battery level, they might uh, decide to, um, to depart uh, at a later time than their preferred departure time, provided that uh, the, um, the cost to get that charging um, level is, uh, is um, low enough. Hmm? So essentially, this, this um, research is how do we model and quantify flexibility of charging behavior relevant for, um, for grid services, that is smart charging. And uh, so the, the, the way we do, uh, I approach this developing a, a random utility framework um, to explicitly model the trade-offs of short-term charging choices that enable uh, or not uh, uh, load flexibility. By short-term charging choices here, I don't, uh, I mean choices that an individual um, makes when he arrives, he or she arrives at a certain, uh, at a charging facility. So whether to uh, have their vehicle charged as fast as possible or to let, uh, um, give more time for, 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 for um, smart charging. So this is not a choice between um, smart charging programs like, uh, um, like, for example, Professor Daziano has, has, uh, has worked uh, uh, before as well. So the idea is to uh, capture the interplay of, of this random utility framework, to capture the interplay between these short-term choices and, and travel behavior preferences. And the way we do it, uh, we develop uh, some discrete choice experiments to estimate. Um, this model. So uh, here is the random utility model. This is for home charging choices, and and um, basically we um, the way we uh, we did that we, we assume that the the home charge uh, the, the home charging uh, takes can take place before a home based tour, which is a, essentially a return trip to home, and. Um, and so the utility, the joint utility of uh, of the uh, <clears throat> uh, of the, the the utility of the charging choice will depend um, only on the um, characteristics of of the charging alternative, which is the energy level at the end of the charging operation, the effective charging time, so the charging duration and the charging cost. In the case there are no impacts on the on the travel of the subsequent tour. Instead, uh, if uh, for alternatives in which there is an impact on the subsequent tour, then we will have terms uh, added to the, to the utility specification that will account for, um, for, this, uh, um, um, for this impact on the tour. For example, if, if someone, if uh, uh, in a charging option, someone has to leave later than their preferred charging time. He might have a scheduled delay between the out-of-home activity, which then would imply um, maybe a, a reduction of the duration of the out-of-home activity and a delay at home and so on. And this is essentially captured by, by these terms, so travel time changes, um, um, travel variation in travel costs, uh, due to these travel time changes, and then schedule delay, and then um, um, essentially um, a, a reduction in uh, um, any reduction in the out of home activity. Mm -hmm. So, and essentially, what uh, we need to do is to estimate these these, these parameters um, in our in our um, discrete choice. Uh, in our um, discrete choice model, and um, and um, typically it's it's uh, it's very hard to use uh, reveal preference data for this type of choices because they are not uh, rich enough in terms of variability on the on the patterns. Uh, sorry, on the um, variability on um, on the attributes uh, uh, of our alternatives. And uh, therefore, we need uh, choice experiments. And so, uh, um, we um, 
we designed two types of choice experiment, one type uh, in which basically there was no effect on the, no impact on the activity travel uh, patterns after the, the charging choice, and one uh, in which with the impact on the activity travel path. And um, so the, the levels that, um, that the variables that we use in these choice experiments are the energy levels at the end of the charging operation, um, <clears throat> the charging costs, and in the second and, and the charging duration. And in the second type of charge experience, on top of those also levels of um, um, decrease and increase in um, sorry, decreases in uh, uh, out of home uh, activity uh, um, um, in the in the tour subs, uh, following the the, um, the charging choice. So, and this was uh, we use a de efficient design to estimate the model. So, this is how the the um, choice uh, looks like. So, for instance, before we capture the data of a typical tour. That the, um, the drivers would drive, and um, and then uh, basically uh, um, we provide a target battery level and uh, when the electric vehicle would be ready and the duration of the charging operation and the charging cost mm -hmm. and uh, and this and we, this we we designed as a binary choice between two alternatives. Uh, and this basically is the first choice experiment. The second choice experiment is exactly the same, but also uh, at the uh, duration of charging operation, which were longer than they are typical, uh, um, um, so, so it would cause a delay in the typical departure time from home, and um, and also at the levels of uh, uh, reduction in. Uh, uh, in uh, in participation time in activity time participation at the at the out of home activity to basically uh, to capture part of the of the delay caused. So and then uh, we estimated the sorry mixed logic model for which we could and here I am presenting the um, the, the empirical distribution that we got for. Um, the energy level uh, at the end of the charging operation, and this is the effective, the effective charging time. As you can see, um, for most of the of the sample, that the marginal utility for the energy level after the um, after charging is is a positive one. Though we have uh, uh, part, uh, you know, a consistent part of the sample for which. Uh, the, the marginal utility is uh, is negative, and this might be um, a result of the state preference experiment, but um, the hypothetical choice situation. And but we we are you know uh, pleased the, the, for the fact that we see uh, a majority that have a positive uh, uh, marginal utility for. Uh, energy at the end of charging operation, so at battery level or range, which is equivalent to range. The, for the effective charging time, the, the situation is more mixed. There are, um, and this is the first choice experiment, so no scheduled delays are are implied here. For some people, we have a, a, a negative valuation, and for some people, we have a positive valuation. We interpret the, the positive valuation uh, that people. Are, are okay. Are prefer to not to think of uh, um, um, of the vehicle until they, they have to depart. So for them, it's fine to have <coughs> a longer charging time. But there are some people that prefer to charge as fast uh, as fast as possible. And this is the second choice experiment. Uh, again, here we have a, a positive. Uh, um, mass mainly for, for uh, the marginal utility for energy. And here, the, the schedule delay, instead of, the, the, of using the effective charging time, here we, we um, represent, uh, um, uh, we capture the effective charging time through a schedule delay, because here 
there might be induced a schedule delay induced in the schedule, and so there is a large uh, uh, mass uh, with a um, negative uh, uh, marginal utility uh, for for schedule delay, which means uh, it's obvious people uh, tend to prefer mm, mm, not, mm, charging options that do do not delay their their. So this is this is basically um, the, the, what we found. Uh, so so in, in this work, uh, we model the joint uh, activity and travel charging and activity travel scheduling choices to capture the trade-off between uh, charging preferences and, and travel preferences. Um, basically, I mentioned uh, um, what what we found as far as marginal utility for energy. An effective charging duration. Uh, so the, the main implications that, that we can draw from this work is that um, you know if the sample was 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 fairly small, but assuming that um, uh, this this uh, we could generalize, and I'm not saying that we can. I'm say assuming that, that that we could generalize. The implication is uh, the charging service provider. Could accommodate smart charge for a for a um, for a big share of of drivers could um, could accommodate smart charging at home without necessarily um, giving an incentive as long as the the the, um, the charging uh, operation doesn't induce schedule delay. So, and which is uh, uh, I think uh, uh, an interesting. So the, um, there are, uh, beside uh, obtaining this this, uh, this observation, one could use these uh, charging choice models to um, develop dynamic incentives for for um, flexible electric vehicle charging. So here we assume that we have uh, a charging service providers that that provide alternative charging choices to the um, to the users uh, and. Uh, so that they can uh, basically provide services to to the grid as well, right? Um, so um, and we, so, yeah. So are these uh, sample populations for driving these marginal utilities? Are these mostly derived from suburban drivers? Say again. Are these uh, is the sample population? No, sorry. The sample was mainly uh, from London. This is UK data. I should have mentioned it. Yeah, from. Uh, London uh, drivers, and in this case, they were not necessarily electric vehicle drivers. They were just drivers. So we explain. Uh, so as, as imagine you have an EV and you have to charge it, and so on. So that's uh, so it was in London, UK. So then, and and we assume that that they had their own charging facility at all. So yes, it would be not necessarily um, drivers in uh, in. Uh, only ask because uh, I did research on something like this, uh, but in using data from Harlem. Okay. And we had to consider a big fact that was that people don't have home charging. Yes. In Harlem. So so this was based. These results were based on home charging. So people that 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 had the availability to charge at home, but of course you could um, estimate charging choice model. Uh, for uh, <clears throat> for public charging, if the public charging infrastructure was available to these people, or or even uh, for work-based charging, so you can design choice experiments pretty much uh, in in various scenarios. Uh, yes. So how do we we can use basically these choice models in uh, um, to so once they are estimated uh, for operational uh, planning of electric vehicle charging to generate price signals um, that incentivize uh, flexible charging choices. And essentially, so assuming that um, we have estimated a, a multinomial logic model for the charging choice, uh, for, for, for the charging uh, that, that can be applied to the charging alternative provided by the charging service provider. So that so the idea is to try to identify which price or or incentives or price level um, 
we should have to incentivize flexible, uh, flexible um, alternatives or flexibility. Um, <clears throat> so that the way you want to formulate this, this problem is uh, um, essentially you consider uh, that a charging service provider has uh, already some charging operations that are being fulfilled and so uh, he has to set a uh, value of pricing or surcharges for a vehicle that is just arriving for surcharges for specific alternative and also he has to update the charging schedule so for um, for the specific charging request the charging schedule is the actual uh, um, charging profile that the vehicle will undergo mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and so so this is basically um, the, the update of the charging schedules and these are the charging decision which is the amount of energy that the um, a specific um, vehicle will, do, will be charged in that specific time period so and you can essentially um, recast this problem as a, with a dynamic programming recursion where well, here there is the, the choice uh, the choice probability and uh, this is the the revenue uh, for the charging and this is the price level which is our um, for the alternative our decision variables there are also these as decision variables which are the technically the the uh, sorry not not these but they depend on on the um, on the charging schedules and I will and I will show you up but essentially uh, this term here uh, uh, represents the, the opportunity cost um, for, a, for a charging alternative. Huh? And so one, uh, basically, in order to identify the, the, the price level of charge, one has to um, solve these problems. And the biggest challenges in solving this price, if this is an MNL, the biggest cha uh, challenge to solve this problem is actually to uh, identify the opportunity cost hmm? because it will depend um, on future demand and also my future pricing as a charging service provide my future charging decision um, we uh, in this bit of work we avoided to, to this problem by considering instead of using their real uh, or a good approximation of the opportunity cost we just consider the insertion cost so we use a myopic approach we just Consider the, the the additional cost to um, to add a, a new charging schedule uh, um, from the new vehicle arriving and, and the chosen alternative and the corresponding chosen alternative um, without cons necessarily considering future demand mm -hmm. and uh, and so and this is a limitation but uh, this is what we did right now and basically. Then we calculate this insertion cost, calculating the insertion cost, uh, this is the cost for charging the current vehicles that, that we still have um, to charge now, assuming that we know that the, the price is in the next um, few hours. And also the, the, the same cost if we add um, the, the, um, each of the alternative chosen. So essentially this is how how we work, so vehicle arrive, the, the charging service provider identify what are the feasible alternative for that vehicle and calculate the, the, the cost for charging uh, if, if a vehicle chooses a specific alternative and also he knows the cost where, when no alternative are chosen. And so we calculate the, the, um, the insertion cost, we plug it in here and we solve um, this this optimization to get uh, the price levels. So here is a simple numerical example. So we have an, one arriving vehicle and few vehicles already on charge. Uh, it arrives with this battery level, and this is the minimum energy charge required for the next trip. And the expected departure, the preferred departure time would be 10 hours from now, which is when it's arrived. And uh, these are the behavioral assumptions. Here we assume the, the behavior, the ability to pay for energy at the end of the charging operation. And we assume that they are different on, on the charging operation. So 
uh, if we just solve the, the problem uh, as it is, is a purely uh, profit uh, maximization problem, so that the, the, uh, basically the, the surcharges will increase the, the probability of the alternative that gives the maximum um, expected profit, but this is, is not the, is, is, is just the one that has maximum energy at the end of charge, so that the, the, the maximum energy at the end of charging, but it's unflexible. Hmm? So in this way, we are not incentivizing flexibility, we are just maximizing the profit. Whereas if we somehow uh, had uh, in here a, a measure of, uh, of the flexibility, which sometimes is called the slack time, which is the, 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 um, the charging time of that alternative minus the minimum, the minimum charging time, then we can see that uh, uh, the alternatives uh, uh, that are, uh, the dev, so the alternative, in this case, the alternative that is maximum um, probability of being chosen is not the one that has, um, that could give just the maximum profit, but um, is also the one that is uh, flexible. So this is, this is just uh, an example. It's flexible because uh, there is um, basically um, the, the, the charging service provider won't have to deliver the, the alternative as, uh, the, uh, the energy as fast as possible, but it can uh, basically uh, generate uh, an alternative schedule. So basically just to summarize in this one, we introduced choice-based optimization for the pricing of EV and in order to uh, incentivize flexible alternatives, we need to add uh, a value uh, of flexibility, um, and not just using the insertion cost. Clearly, if we add a better um, <clears throat> approximation of the, of the um, opportunity cost for that alternative, we might not need that uh, flexibility term because that would be essentially incorporated in, in the in the approximation of the of the, uh, of the um, opportunity cost that accounts for for future demand and and, uh, and 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 our future choices. But for now, this is where we are. So now the do I still have uh, five minutes? minutes? Five minutes. So just one or two. So I talked about charging. I, I really want to mention something about the critical mineral. Uh, demand management applied to electric uh, fleet planning. So, as I mentioned, electric vehicles, you okay, know, they are crucial for decarbonization. They are a major uh, driver for critical mineral demand. So, critical minerals like lithium, nickel, and cobalt. And as I mentioned before, there are growing concern for security of supply of critical mineral for batteries. And uh, there are concern for social ethical an environmental impact of uh, pro procuring this, uh, these minerals and for batteries. Um, so when I look at, I mean, considering the security of supply, these, these figures are, are, quite, uh, um, are quite telling. They tell you that, uh, um, that the, the, the projected demand with, uh, um, with the you know, projected supply, and, and of course there is a big, big deficit uh, in the U.S. in North America. Um, so, most of policies, as I mentioned before, are focused on um, on looking at um, the supply side. But I think there is scope for for uh, demand management and for uh, what it concern. Uh, the consumer market is more tricky in the U.S. because demand management for critical mineral would imply trying to uh, incentivize downscaling of vehicles and downscaling for batteries, and so lower ranges and so on. And this might, you know, it's uh, it's not really um, something that is very palatable yet uh, for for um, the American market. But mm, there is scope to try to understand what what would be the incentives that are needed for people to, uh, to choose smaller uh, 
uh, smaller uh, vehicles and smaller batteries. But this is another problem. So I think uh, uh, fleets uh, are in a better place to kind of be uh, more efficient in choosing their, their vehicle because they tend to be uh, to optimize better um, their cost and they are interested in, <clears throat> in uh, um, uh, environmental and, and, uh, and social goals and so uh, that's, that's why in this initial work we, um, we focus on, on fleet. So the, the question here is what is the cost premium uh, a critical mineral um, cost premium that a critical mineral minimizing fleet would yield compared to a um, cost minimizing fleet. Uh, so we, we basically we develop a, um, a cost uh, a problem of uh, um, fleet and charging um, infrastructure planning based on cost minimization and then one that is based on uh, on um, critical mineral content and and we compare uh, the results and we formulate a very um, simplified model for uh, for fleet sizing and charging infrastructure sizing, but this allows us to um, to give us some some gives us some insights, uh, uh, nevertheless. So here is how we formulate it. So this is the these are the capital costs for the vehicles, the capital costs for the infrastructures, um, and these are the the running costs will depend on on um, the time. Uh, of when the vehicle are charged. So this is the demand um, over a certain period, um, let's say a number of days, divided by the total number of days of this period, and, and basically multiplied by the number of days of the planning period, let's say 10 years and so on, and here there is a discount factor. Um, and of course there are some constraints, so we want that uh, basically that each vehicle type, so here basically we are looking for different vehicle type of different range and different batteries and so on. Uh, so um, for each vehicle type, uh, we will have to meet the, to the total distance in each, uh, in each time period. And uh, the number of uh, vehicles for each type uh, must cover the allocated uh, <coughs> travel distance in each time period. And also the, the charging infrastructure has to be, uh, for each charger type, slower, faster, has to be uh, large enough um, to um, cover the utilization in each time period. And then we also impose that basically all energy consumed by driving uh, needs to be uh, recharged. There are some additional constraints that so here we impose that basically the total energy storage in the battery um, should be uh, uh, is, is defined as this, so uh, at the beginning of the time period. Um, and so we put some constraints that the battery capacity should not exceed the, the average, basically the average battery capacity, the battery level shouldn't exceed the 80% and then we have a minimum level is the of uh, the state of charge that is 2% and and here there is a constraints for average of the, the the average battery level should be enough for uh, for feasible for driving feasibility in each time period um sorry the for the minimum cost uh, minimum mineral optimization here it's basically it's the same constraints but we we applied it uh, to the, um, this is the, the, the amount of the minerals for, for each vehicle type times the number of vehicles in each type. And for a fair, cons um, uh, for a fair comparison between the minimum cost solution, uh, we, we identify, uh, we basically <coughs> solve uh, um, the minimal um, um, cost problem again. Um, while constraining uh, the, minimal, the, the mineral use to the values uh, obtained, solving the, 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 <coughs> the minimum critical mineral problem. 
So um, as an initial example, we use the yellow cab in New York cities, uh, and we consider as potential uh, vehicle set and, and charger sets these, these vehicles that are broadly based on, on uh, existing vehicles um, for which we have uh, uh, information about the price, the battery cell range, and the amount of, of minerals in, uh, in the batteries. So this is the, um, the charger sets. We use two level two, one with the higher power and lower power, 7.2 kilowatts, 19.2 kilowatts, and then two DC chargers. So uh, DCs are very fast charger, uh, 50 kilowatts and 150 kilowatts. Uh, so, and these are the characteristics basically of our, of our fleet. We consider this typical weekday demand that are this, um, and this typical um, traffic speed. Uh, and uh, and uh, we consider this from we took this from the 2018 New York City TLC fat book for um, for the yellow cab mm -hmm. and we have some electricity price and uh, this is the the number of operational days of the discount factor that we chose so here uh, some some initial results. Uh, uh, if we consider, um, so we consider two scenarios. One that is the baseline US market with no, essentially, with doesn't have very short range vehicles. The short range vehicles are essentially um, this one here, uh, that, that have uh, very small batteries, 19.2 and 24 kilowatt hours battery. Because now, typically, the, the US market is mm, only the larger batteries are typically available. And then uh, um, a sh uh, scenarios in which also the short range vehicles are available. And we calculate for both scenarios the minimum critical mineral, uh, the minimum cost solution, the minimum critical mineral solution. So, and the observation that I want to make here is that in the, in the baseline market solution, the minimal cost solution is, uh, is very, is quite, so as I'm, much lower cost than the minimal critical mineral solution. So, and and because uh, the minimal cost solution choose this vehicle, the the Bolt, and and the minimal critical solution would choose this this Tesla type and and Model Three type. And whereas if we consider shorter range vehicles, because the batteries are, you know, smaller batteries are are also uh, have smaller vehicle cost, we have the critical mineral solution that is very close to the, so the minimal, uh, the minimal critical mineral solution as, as a cost that is very close to the uh, min minimal cost solution and also the, the battery consumption. So that's, uh, that's just to say that uh, just mm, if, if uh, um, considering uh, um, having a market which would allow uh, availability of short and range vehicle would uh, would give significant uh, uh, improvement in a reduction in the demand of uh, um, of critical mineral at, at a, you know and, and and this solution would be also low cost. Uh, another interesting scenario is which I think that we should ask us. Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, leave it at that. Uh, so I tried a bit to give uh, an, an overview uh, of some of the work that I'm doing. These are essentially the, the next steps on modeling charging behavior. So I think we need the larger data set that includes both reveal preference and, and choice experiment data for joint estimation. For, um, for um, development choice based incentives, we need better approximation for the in, um, for uh, the opportunity cost of of, of uh, choosing a charging alternative. And as far as critical mineral demand management, I just had to rush through it. Um, so I think uh, we, we want to we didn't consider battery degradation effects, so we, which we want to consider in. Uh, in, uh, in our optimization, 
and also we focus on fleets, we also want to focus on, on uh, um, trying to understand behavior and therefore develop a uh, behavior driven solution for the consumer market. Thank you very much. Sorry, I, I was a bit. Any question for Nicolò? Thank you for the presentation. I'm, I'm actually like interested in the first half of the presentation. Um, you, you've modeled the demand side in terms of like what's the charging behavior like. But I'm, I'm thinking about the perspective of the charging service provider. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they will need to actually like procure the energy from the, from the market. Yeah. So like, do you, I, I guess my question is, could you comment on the relationship between the procurement process and the charging behavior? And would there need to be some sort of modeling in terms of the joint distribution of these two things? Uh, yes, so the, I guess uh, in the, in the first part of the talk, I um, I model the charging. So how, I'm estimating a, a model uh, for how would um, an individual respond to uh, um, to potential options that a charging service provider uh, will give when when at the time that that they need to pl plug in their vehicle. So. Uh, a certain energy level uh, at the end of the charging operation, which is a certain range, a certain charging duration, and a certain cost. Now, then the um, the options that the charging service provider will give will depend on on uh, on the state of the electricity market at the time, yeah. and um, and essentially the the. The idea of, uh, of the choice-based optimization, which was in the second part of the first part of, of my talk, um, was uh, essentially is intended to kind of integrate the, the, the decisions of, uh, um, of the charging service provider. So what, what type of uh, alternative to present and at what prices based on the state of the market there. So, and, and generate incentives that uh, basically um, improve uh, um, the probability that an individual chooses an alternative that is more either more remunerative or or that provide more flexibility given the, the future state of, of or the, the requirements of, of the electricity market. I don't know if this goes in the direction of answering your question. Oh, well, very quickly. Yeah, very quick, yeah. So, um, in the utility function that you uh, you laid out, yeah. it seemed to me that uh, there could be this collinearity between you know those covariates. For example, the targeted charging level versus expected charging time. I suspect these two things could be um, correlated. So, in that sense, uh, in that sense, when you when you estimate your model, mm -hmm. because you, I know why you, because you try to distill out the sensitivity of people with respect to, yeah. right, you know, yeah. this, this thing. So how, how robust do you feel uh, those estimates of those uh, could, be, could be in the house? So essentially, uh, that's why we, mm, we use a choice experiment, uh, and it's because we can manipulate the, the value of uh, of those uh, um, of of the covariates in a way so that we can estimate the uh, the parameter uh, without uh, essentially uh, having these these correlations uh, that you're talking about. Yeah, so you, you basically you design the experiment. So yes, in in the real world, if we try to estimate these models. Uh, using the reveal preference data, so data from a real charging transaction, then you would uh, incur in this uh, in these problems. That in a, in a choice experiments, we can design them in such a way that essentially you can manipulate those values. But it's true that, of course, if you have a um, you have to consider you know, you, you may risk, and we tried not to in our design, to, to have an irrealistic alternative if you want really 
to uh, to avoid these these correlations completely. So there is a bit this this risk still, uh, but we try to minimize this with the experimental design. Thank you. Thank you. Let's thank again. Yeah.